Hello, this is Professor Stephen Schwift of the Columbia Gorge Community College presenting the PowerPoint about British background and colonization. Now, there's a greater story to discuss, and you will cover that in Western history, but we will start with the Protestant Reformation. Now, the Catholic Church had established itself as the leading church in Western Europe, although there had been some dissenters over time and a split with the Eastern Orthodox Church. Well, the Catholic Church started to have a variety of problems right as the New World was founded in the 1500s. Spiritual lethargy and bureauc uh, bureaucratic corruption had led people um, involved in the church to feel wanting for some spirituality, some um, excitement in their beliefs. Also, the church had involved itself in the sale of indulgences, and indulgences were the granting of um, permission or, or power from the Pope to those who were stuck in purgatory. And so you have to remember that the religious belief at the time was very strong and the belief that there was eternal heaven, eternal life in heaven at the foot of God was a reality and also had you committed sin which all men did they were to be punished in purgatory until the sin was washed away and eventually the people would be received into heaven and for most for the most part individuals were confident that they would eventually get to heaven but have to spend long time perhaps in purgatory now the most common and the ones that most of you hopefully have heard about were the indulgences given to those who fought for the church most commonly in the crusades if you went on crusade against the muslims in um, the holy land or on the way to the Holy Land, you are generally given a indulgence to remove the necessity of going through purgatory, no matter how horrible your life had been up to that point. And so after the Crusades, which end right around the same time as well, the indulgences were sold for cash to rich Europeans who wished to, of course, skip parts of purgatory or purgatory altogether but would provide to the church money to build new churches to pay for the needs of the popes and the bishops this leads to the third point here on the PowerPoint the luxurious lifestyles of popes in the papal court with this influx of money with the power that the Pope was uh, re receiving they often lived what many thought a very unchristian like lifestyle with the finest in foods wines etc now the day of the pope being married had long passed but several of these popes would engage in um, relationships that were not seen as um, holy now the protests at the time that were successful led to the Protestant religion. And the first was Martin Luther, a German who, by protesting, he posted his protests on the church door, um, started what many believed was a new and separate religion. And of course, it would turn out to be many new brands of Christianity he started the Protestant Reformation. Now the followers of Luther became Lutherans. Long came after um, Luther, or right around the end of his um, life, was John Calvin. And John Calvin or, uh, created the group known as Calvinists, or as will come down in our story, the Puritans. And they believed in a very strict form of Christianity that you lived by God's grace and you lived your life totally immersed in religious values. Now, 
Now England broke with the church due to Henry VIII. And Henry and his father and the um, kings before them were very connected to the Catholic faith and to the Pope. In fact, Henry VIII wrote a brief pamphlet, and it may have been written by some of his advisors, about the religious faith and a, a scathing attack on Lutherism. And he, was, he received the benefit from the Pope of defender of the faith. Well, Henry VIII came to his problems with the Catholic Church due to his first marriage to Catherine of Aragon. The two were married in the Catholic Church and were destined to create a family. Now, King Henry VIII wanted a son to carry on as king in his stead once he passed away. But unfortunately, Catherine had given birth to a few sons, but they were either stillborn or died very young. The one child that they produced was Mary, who would eventually become Queen Mary I. Well, while this was going on, King Henry VIII continued to have sexual liaisons with other women, which was seen as pretty normal for a king. But what was not normal is that he fell in love with one of them. And this was Anne Boleyn. Now Anne had problems of her own, but the main problem was the King Henry VIII's need to divorce his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. But Catherine was the daughter of King Ferdinand and Isabella. Yes, the same two monarchs who gave Columbus the money and the ships to travel to the New World in the first place, which had made their kingdom very powerful. The Spanish monarchs also were devoutly Catholic, and therefore they had the um, ear of the Pope. And when Henry VIII asked for an annulment of his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, which was very common for both the asking by um, royalty and even the higher um, higher um, positioned people at the time, it was denied due to pressure from Spain. So King Henry VIII decided if he couldn't get an annulment from the Pope, he would get rid of the Pope. And he established the Church of England, which was entirely Catholic in nature, except instead of the Pope, the King of England himself was in charge. So it had very few changes as far as how the ordinary people were worshipped, but the Pope, as you can well imagine, was very upset and tried for the rest of um, Henry VIII's life and well into the reigns of his children, Edward I, Mary, and then Elizabeth I, who was Henry and Anne's daughter and the last remaining child of Henry VIII, um, to regain England as a Catholic country. Well, Henry started the Protestant Reformation in England by separating the Church of England from the Catholic Church. But Elizabeth I was the instrument that created a separate and different Briti I mean, Amer uh, sorry, British church. Well, Elizabeth I also, and she reigned for a, um, over 50 years, she also established England's first um, colonies in America, at least the first contact with America. And you can see here on this slide that she encouraged pirating of the Spanish um, loot that was coming back from, Amer from America. Um, Spain became the richest country in Europe due to the gold and silver that they found in the New World, mainly in Mesoamerica. Um, and so the ships that would carry over the gold and silver back from the New World were often prey to British attacks. And so she supported Francis Drake, who she um, knighted once he brought back one of these Spanish ships with all of its um, 
cargo intact, um, as well as settlement issues. I mean, so, sorry, settlement uh, plans. The first settlement was by Sir Walter Raleigh of, of Roanoke Island on the north coast of Northern Carolina in 1585. This colony was not successful. It was at first mainly a, sh a shipping stop so that the boats could be repaired or simply get out of um, the Atlantic Ocean during any kind of stormy seasons, that sort of thing. But then in 1587, it was reestablished with both men and women in hope to be a permanent settlement. Well, events between England and Spain worsened and the Spanish Armada was sent to capture the Protestant England of Elizabeth. And this kept ships from coming back to America, back to Roanoke, to resupply, to make sure that everything was all right. Well, it took them a couple years to get back, but when they got back in 1590, there's not a trace of the colonists to be found. Now, the first British subject was born in American, on American soil at Roanoke, a little girl named Virginia Dare, but she too disappeared with the rest of her people. Now, there are several theories of what happened to the colonies, the colonists at Roanoke. It is most likely that they were either attacked and killed by the natives in the area, the Lumbee tribes, or that they went and joined the Lumbee tribes to survive the winter months. There's two signs that the latter theory is correct. On the trees around the colony, there was written CRO, which stood for Croatian, what they called the natives there, and also um, other markings on trees. So perhaps the colonists were giving some sign that they had left, but even though the ships in 1590 searched for them, they could not find them. However, the English defeated the Spanish Armada in 1589, and this freed England from the overwhelming presence of Spain's military. And therefore, they were free to come and go in the New World um, after that time. So the focus of James I, who was Elizabeth's successor, came to colonize the New World. And the first attempt was, under James I, was the Virginia Company. And this was given um, by James I to a group of investors. And we'll talk about them in a subsequent PowerPoint. But in 1607, this first group of 100 settlers arrived. They named their settlement Jamestown after the king, of course. And they settled in in the Chesapeake Bay. Now, one reality of early America will be a very high death rate, not just for the colonists who come over from Europe, mainly our discussion will be about the English, but also for the natives who had been living in America free of disease or free of European diseases for thousands of years and therefore had no built-in resistance, no built-in immunity, and were subject to the deadly diseases of smallpox, measles, uh, bubonic plague, things like that. And for the African Americans who will eventually be brought in um, as slaves to work the fields in Virginia and throughout the British colonies. So we see that very quickly over half of the um, colonists die in that first winter. And we'll pick up the story of Virginia and the New World in a subsequent PowerPoint. Thank you.